Good morning brothers and sisters and happy Sabbath and welcome to this happy Sabbath day. We're at Kyle's home here in Claycross. A bit cold here today and uh, it's Christmas fair today. So we're doing this a bit early. And uh, I'd get Kyle to say an opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being here this morning to say their blessed sacrament. I ask the Heavenly Father that we remember the full meaning of the sacrament, that it is to honour our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carl. So hopefully you've got your emblems ready and the ours is looking very professional today. Uh, I don't know where he's got the paper or he's cut that out of there. So can you see that? <laughs> Did you cut that shape out? Yeah. Oh, blimey. Yeah. Very professional. So, hopefully you've got your emblems ready if you'd like to bow or kneel. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. I'm going to commence with the blessing on the bread. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to hand over to Brother Kyle now, Who's going to say the blessing on the wine? O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carl. God bless. Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath message, I want to share a scripture from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. But I'm going to be reading this from the ESV and not the normal KJV, King James Version, that I normally read from. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I felt impressed today to talk to you guys about prayer. And with this week being Thanksgiving week, traditionally here in the United States, this scripture really stood out to me. As Christians, I think prayer is quite a bit like breathing to us. It's something that we, we do. I actually meet with a couple of brothers every Wednesday in prayer. And it's an open prayer. Everyone's invited. And we literally spend 30 minutes praying. We have an opening prayer. We discuss 
the topics and things we're praying, people that we're praying about, people who have requested prayers, and we then pray for them. And then we do a closing prayer. Just a quick side note. If you go to cjccf.org, there's links there, uh, right there on the main page. If you need to make a prayer request, we will pray for you. And I think it becomes easy for us in prayer to complain to God. And, And I think we should. I think that the Lord wants to hear our troubles and our sorrows. At the same time, I know he also wants to hear the things that we're thankful for. He wants us to not worry about things because he's got our back. And even though things may seem bad in whatever situation we're in, if we take the time to pray and ask diligently and seek answers, listen to the, for the Holy Spirit to tell us what to do, we will find a way out. And I, I know that that statement really oversimplifies a lot of really, really complicated things. And yet, I, I don't think it's wrong. I, I know when I was younger in my life, and even now today, even recently, even this year, there have been times when I just think the world is ending for myself, not literally the world's ending, but you know, just everything's falling down, crashing around me. And I pray and I listen and it's hard not to worry. It's hard not to get stressed. And it's easy just to think, oh, well, other people have it worse than me. So, you know, but the reality is that it doesn't matter if other people have things worse than us. Whatever we're in in that moment feels like something we're trapped in. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's our natural fight or flight response. It's good to know that we have a God that listens and that makes a way out for us. But we have to ask. I've talked to many people who I ask them, have you prayed on this? And they say, I I don't want to burden God with this. God is infinite. Yeah, to him, our things seem trivial, but we are not trivial to God. And therefore, these things that we would presume would be nothing to God are important to God. Having children has really helped me in my perspective. I see my kids come to me with things that just seem like the end of the world type emergencies for them. And yet, in my adult perspective, they're nothing. And I don't mean that in a mean or bad way. They're not literally nothing. But, you know... Someone taking someone else's crayon in the grand scheme of things really isn't the end of the world. But to them, to their young minds, it is. And I don't want to trivialize any of the hardships that people go through. What I want to do is point out that the little things that may seem trivial to us are still important to the Lord. You don't have to wait for an end of the world type emergency to pray and to let the Lord know what you need. Don't be anxious. Have faith. Believe that God is going to take care of us. Do it in thanksgiving. Be thankful to the Lord for the things that he is going to do and the things that he has done and recognize the good things that the Lord has done in your life. But the important part is right there at the end of verse 6. Let your requests be made known to God. God wants to hear from us. God wants to know what we're going through. I know that God knows everything, so I know he already knows what I'm going through, but he wants us to communicate it with him. And then because of our faith, that peace of God will protect us. And one of the key things here for me is when I panic, and this is just me, you may be different, I can't always see the way out. But when I calm down, it becomes easier to find solutions. So if we can find that peace in Jesus, if we ask the Lord to comfort our souls in Christ, as Alma did, I know through experience that the Lord can get us through the storms. And that doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. It doesn't mean that horrible things aren't going to happen to people or that horrible things that have happened are just magically going to go away. It means that there's hope. 
it means that you can get through this, whatever this is. And I do genuinely believe that. I know that God loves us. I know that God is there for us. And I understand that sometimes as human finite beings, we can't see it. But it is my prayer that you will take the time to pray, to speak to and to listen to the Lord. So we will know and understand what his will is and recognize that sometimes what the Lord wants, what's just going to happen, and what we want isn't always going to be the same thing. But it doesn't mean that we aren't loved. And it doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't have something beautiful in store for us. Even if we, at the point that we're in in the moment, can't see it. That's my message of Sabbath. And I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us on this sacrament service. So if you want to know anything about the uh, church, David will hopefully put the church website at the top. Or if you need anything from me, just email me on the email link below. So don't forget Thursday night is prayer night. And uh, there was only me and Mark on last week because it was Thanksgiving in America. And um, so we'll see if we get more on this week. So I'm going to finish off with a prayer. And then we're off to the Christmas market. <laughs> so, Heavenly Father, we ask that your spirit be with us as we go about our day. That we meet people in the Christmas market and we can bring joy to them by just saying hello or that we will get something that reminds us of you at the Christmas market and uh, I thank you that I have Kyle as a partner doing this so uh, he's, he's such a blessing so we pray a blessing on him and all those people and Mark as well and David and Brand. we pray for them and their family and I say this thing in Jesus Christ's name Amen Wishing you all a very happy and blessed Sabbath day. Yeah. Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. Yes, yeah, sh Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat. Shabbat. Yeah. Shabbat. I said Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Au revoir. Shalom. <laughs>